Welcome to Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex. It's it's a momentous day. Infamy. No, no, that's more than famous. Oh. This is just momentous. Momentous. Yeah, you're, are you ready? Momentous. Whoa! Holy hell. Hey. All right, we got some explaining to do. So here's the thing. <laughs> oh, crap. You cannot buy these, yeah. and that's why I'm not worried about Hold on, you should give me a heads up so I could like mentally and emotionally prepare. No, I wanted to catch you off guard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the, because this is Whiskey Vault, owned yeah. by the Wizard Academy, a mm -hmm. 501c3 nonprofit organization, we can't financially, personally benefit from mm -mm. the things that we have on the show and the things we talk about. Fair enough. That's why we started like the Whiskey Tribe channel and the yeah. Crowd of Barrel Distillery. Is like if we're going to do anything we can talk with about a community there. that's fun and a deeper level than what we're doing right here, we got to start something brand spanking new. Thank you for showing up there. But that also means that it's you can't if we have products coming out of our distillery. Yeah, we can't really talk about it here. Yeah. For one, no one can get it. Yeah. <laughs> except our patrons. Right. And and two, yeah. if it can ever be shown that it looks like we're pointing sales to our own distillery. Right. That's so, a that's a huge no no. Single mom batch so, batch is this set batch this is, seven? This is the original. This is the original. This is the original is that the, we put into that full size Buffalo Trace oh, barrel. Okay, yeah, so. This is the one that won best grain to glass malt in Texas. Yep. Uh, Deb Nehemiah distilled it. Distilled that in the little twenty one gallon still. Yeah. It took her nine years to yeah, fill yeah, a yeah. single <laughs> barrel. Yep, yep, and she twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Right. I mean, uh, at, at a certain point, there's so many weeks. Going into like this little drip feed. Yeah, trying it, to get into a this should have cost like a thousand dollars a bottle. Oh yeah, <laughs> just for payroll purposes. Just to make fucking break even. Yeah, um, but at a certain point, I did have the thought, like, can we keep up with the angel share no. with how slow this is dripping out? No, because it's dripping out in this container. Yeah, and ethanol evaporates pretty quick. Yeah, it's like, can we keep up with evaporation? Because I see a barrel that we'd like to fill. But yeah. it was a Buffalo Trace barrel. Mm -hmm. Use Buffalo Trace so barrel. So it's actually three, it's almost th almost four years old, but three yeah. years old. Yeah. And uh, used oak, Buffalo Trace barrel. Mm -hmm. It's whole life. Yeah. 50%, all 100% Maris Otter malt, mm -hmm. but we peated 50% of it at Andalusia's peat shed. Yeah, with Irish peat. Yeah, and so when it got entered into the Texas Whiskey Festival competition, we won first place with this, yeah. and Andalusia won second place. By fractions of a by point. By like 0. 0.4. Fractions of a point. Yeah. I, I saw Ty, uh, I think it was, week, it was two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, Two weeks ago. Like, thanks for pushing us across yeah, the line, Yeah, yeah, like, hey, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty sure, honestly, when you taste this, that little black pepper peat that's in there is yeah. what makes it magical. Mm -hmm. Without it, it would have just been a good unpeated malt. Yeah. We probably wouldn't have won first no place. No good deed goes unpunished. So, we are talking about this... Um, not to promote it. Yeah, because it's sold out. It's sold, sold out. out for it, so we can't financially benefit yeah. from this. Yeah. But this is to mark mm. the end of donated whiskeys, as far as I know. Now I'm going to put out there: if you donated a bottle yeah. and you never saw it, yeah, 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 that which in theory is possible. Oh. There's a lot of moving parts of getting bottles to us. Sure. Please email me at daniel at wizardacademy.org. Yeah, I may have a couple in my office. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. No, specifically, there's one uh, from Jesse Wilson from Still It. Oh, okay. He handed me a bottle at the Bastards Ball. So let's review it or years something. Years ago. Okay. And we liked the hell out of it. Okay. Well, I, I like drink it all it. now. No. Okay. I tried a little bit. Well, so there may still be some bottles that we can catch up on if yeah. we miss yours, and I'll go find it. Oh, yeah. Um, but my plan now is I'm already working on the things you can get reviews that start after this video. Yeah. So. At this point, we'll be able to get into stuff that's going to be widely relevant. Mm -hmm. And how often are we going to be um, bringing in stuff? Because you know we, want to, we don't want to completely turn our back right. on the craft. Well, so I, I'll take as many craft as I can find that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We'll pair it with the same comparable product on the day that there we, we review something anybody can Like get. the AB is something that I think is going to be infinitely helpful. Yeah. Whenever somebody, the, the, we're saying, has less oak and more honey yeah, but the and risk a bit more is cinnamon. Like, what if someone said, used oak malt and put this up against Glenmorangie? Well, this is nothing like Glenmorangie. <laughs> no, 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 same category. Yeah, yeah, so it's going to be a categorical thing, not a true AB comparison. Yeah, yeah. Probably. But the AB, we've always said, like, mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out how to start naming notes, mm -hmm. to have two bottles side by side. It's helpful. It's easier to, to, to decide, well, what does this have that this doesn't, yeah. and vice versa. Now, if you still want to donate to put your name on a bottle, we will still do Magnificent Bastards mm -hmm. and Patron Saints and everything. There's a link, we'll put it in the description, where you can donate a certain amount of money 
and tell us what category of whiskey you want it to be going towards. Yeah, yeah. And the next time we review something everyone can get, I'm gonna write your name on that bottle mm -hmm. when we review it and then we'll put it in the vault. Yeah. On the nose though. <sighs> Oh, come, come on. on. <laughs> this is so good. When we pulled this barrel to bottle it. You know what? Let's not call this a review. Let's call this a love fest. A tasting. <laughs> yeah, it's a tasting. Little because bit. we pulled this. You know what my first, I think I've said this before, but yeah. you know what my first reaction was when I smelled this? Hmm. Thank God. Yeah. Because if it sucked. Yeah. You know, you you have always been pretty nervous about that. Yeah. Because there's a learning curve in anything. Like, it's fine to do something that's out there and fails, and it's right. funny, and we can talk about it, right. and we can all laugh together. Right. But if your fundamental core, the try-hard product, <laughs> like, fell flat, that was that's a big one. So we got to probably give tasting notes here. Yeah, so there's a toasted marshmallow nose mixed with a little bit of a lemon citrusy sort of tangy note. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of a wispy smoke thread that's in distance. Yeah, it's a, but It doesn't quite thread through. The smoke is really nice because it's just enough to show up and be recognizable, but it's not like yeah. a lot of other smoked whiskeys where that's just a big, thick, heavy blanket no. swallowing up everything else. It's almost like your glass used to have whisk, smoky whiskey in it, mm -hmm. and then you poured unpeated malt into it. Yeah, and so yeah. you're still getting a little bit of remnant of the smoke in your glass. Mmm. That but it's lemon. soft. Yeah. Even at the proof that it's at, which is 116. We didn't yeah. proof this down at all. It's clean. It's the palate that puts it all together for me. There's a vanilla creme brulee toast and toasted and charred creme brulee that just it's, envelops the mid palate. It's very complex. It adds weight to the smoke. It's, the smoke becomes black pepper and yeah. ash. One of the things that was the most fun for me to realize at the end, even though there's just a grain in here, mm -hmm. it's Maris Otter Barley. Right. From a single grain, you can have something that has a tremendous amount of complexity. Oh yeah. Like we, we peat smoked it, but it's still just one ingredient right. that's been fermented but and the cuts were brewed specific. and distilled and cut. And now you have like a tremendous number of layers mm -hmm. and something that started off as here's the one type of grain that we're going to do. Oh, <laughs> what are the odds? I mean, if you're just trying to stack them next to each other, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> oh God. Okay. We've got another one to try from us. Okay, hold on. We still just one more, one more. I'm not gonna waste this. There's this. Uh, is this from my office? Or no, this? we. Uh, I, this is from the tasting room. Okay. I'm gonna put it back once we um, once we're done. Oh, and then I want to say you had lychee. Yeah. Yeah. Honey nut Cheerios randomly popped into my head on the nose. Okay, I get a bit of a lychee sweetness on the on the mm. finish. Damn. Yeah, lemon, tangy. Damn! What are we doing? The smoke in there? Come on! What? Not, I, a, not a review. I can't believe how much I like that. I mean, basically, we designed to our preferences well, yeah. and then nailed it. Well, and and yeah. um, one of the things that we're always going on about, because we're spoiled, it's so many whiskeys, thank you, is I think the longer we've done this, the more we appreciate unique things. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely unique. Mm -hmm. I've never had a whiskey like that. Right. Yeah. Even in American single malt. Yeah, it, I've gotten close, but it's it's this hybrid between everything I liked about a space side scotch mm. mixed with everything I liked about American single malt. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's less of. Uh, I usually in space sides are going to be a little more ripe, dark yeah. fruits, and this is going to be a little bit more of like the citrusy, bright. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it still has that like charred marshmallow, dark toasted. Magnificent this beast. This is jackalope. This yeah. took me two months to blend. This blend. Uh, and, and I always say, you start, I said, you start out with good whiskey, you mm -hmm. end up with, surprising, you end up with good, good whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. This was a, my attempt to recreate a blended scotch. Okay. And so I wanted to have light whiskey, which, mm -hmm. grain whiskey, for Scottish whiskey, mm -hmm. right? And so we started with so a grain whiskey. Was, was it the 15-year-old light whiskey? 15-year-old light whiskey from MGP, which yep. theirs is, 
99 corn, one barley, and used oak. Yep. Right? So 15 years, it would, we got it was like 13 and a half. It turned 15 then, in our barrel house. Um, the other, a lot of the other barrels, not all of them, mm-hmm. were barrels that we did for the Phoenix release. That yeah. real redistilled 15 years. From old. that run. Yeah. So, but it's only about 20% of the light whiskey, and then it's about 75%, three different barrels from Balcones. Yeah. So, right? is there, they're single malt. Yeah. So, one was a used American oak. One was, and then two wine casks. I think they were both sherry, might have been, anyway. Uh, so very wine cask heavy, yeah. right? And then there was a little dusting, like 3% mm-hmm. of real spirits malt. Oh, nice. From their Devil's Backbone yeah. mash bill. Oh, this um, also won an award too. Uh, it's one malt, it's won three so far. So gold from Beverage Tasting Institute, yeah. the most recent one. The, Silver yeah, was in New York. New York, yeah. And a bronze in San Francisco. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that in the San Francisco Spirits Competition, bronze is like a participation trophy. Oh, really? But I don't have any confirmation of that. <laughs> right, right, right. Because right. no one submits it to them, gets nothing, and says it. Right. Right. <laughs> but like, there's a lot of bronze, San Francisco bronzes out there. Yeah. So, so nah, it might just be a participation trophy. This was trophy. the first. Uh, bottling to kick off our Magnificent Beast series. Yeah, that label was beautiful. No, and the, the concept is, um, because it is blended, mm-hmm. it's different you know, elements coming from different sources. So mythical beasts are going to be chimeras. It's basically mm-hmm. hybrid creatures. Right. Things that are you know of legend, of lore. No, I, this is maybe my favorite label we've ever done. Mm-hmm. Although I saw the one for the next one, yeah. and it's competing with this one for my favorite label. Good. Good. Although I also have to say, yeah, yeah. the Rock Hard label yeah. might be one of the coolest labels we've okay. ever released. So, Is it the same artist? Uh, here's the thing. We can't talk about that. Yeah. Because I'll that tell you off. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'll, I'll give you uh, um, the concept was. Yeah. I did like a, a Sisyphus character. Yeah, with the carrying holding, the barrel. Holding a whiskey Who barrel. was the dragon eating its tail idea? Uruburos. Yeah, yeah, it was all being. So basically, this, yeah, ice, yeah. this ice dragon eating its right. own tail that goes on forever with Sisyphus. Right. Sisyphus holding a whiskey barrel going up the side like of the Like a hamster thing. cage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful label. Yeah, I, it, we have so little like, time. This one's got character yeah. and it's artsy and cool, yeah. but that one's also pretty. It's, we have so little time to get the rounds. It's usually just like, here's the first round. Can we print it now, please? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, check for typos, guys. Come on. Yeah. Um, but I want to cut out the middle. Yeah. So you see through. Oh, so the yeah. guy is still can't, but you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, so that'd be awesome. The the whiskey. So the next round, if we do it again, then we would we'll see. We'll do something. it again. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Okay. Um, okay. So I'll tell you in a second. Let's smell it first. So. Uh-huh. Oh, come on. This is mostly Balcones in the nose. So yeah. if you're a Balcones whiskey drinker, you pick it up and you think, oh, wine cask forward. So that fainty sherry, that sort of like sulfuric plum. You, it's like you and drizzled the richest caramel, yeah. warm, warm, soft caramel into the sherry fruits. And then fig and like, yeah. and then if, if you linger long enough, there's roasted walnuts. Fig for days, man. Oh, it's so nice. Or candied walnuts, if you linger a little, it gets that what, sort of like waxy note. What do they attribute that Balcones, because we've talked about this before. That when oil something, note? When something comes from Balcones, there is some type of telltale sign, even across categories that they're doing. It's how they ferment and how they distill. Okay. So they have custom, there's no stills like theirs in the world. Okay. Just, there's none in the world. Yeah. And they ferment with the goal of creating really dramatic, interesting, complex flavors yeah. that they can then pull out on their stills. Okay, so, so how are they fermenting differently? Uh, really long, not a lot of temperature control, mm. open, sort of open air, not quite open air. Okay. Yeah, and they're more in, So they just let it go ham. They're and allowing they some get, funk. And then they get choosy with the cuts. Yeah, well, but they're choosy with the fermentations too, mm-hmm. but, it's, but it's aimed specifically mm. at like sort of letting nature have its way a little. Yeah. But it's not just like, well, whatever happens, happens, and yeah, then we'll yeah. distill it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the character of Balconis is in all the in fermentation and cuts. Yeah. And then now, because they've been trying to figure out how to fight Texas heat, yeah. there's a lot of used oak in their product. Mm. And so you're getting a lot of these wine cask in, impacts or used bourbon impact. Yeah. And it's all in this no, glass. No, it plays really nicely with I'll tell you, the character, the nature of their spirit. When I poured this for, or when Gabe and Jared tried this, what they picked it up and immediately said is like, Oh, you can really smell the light whiskey. Hmm. Because they live at Balcones. Right. And so they looked for the variant. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh, there's your light whiskey. It's yeah. like burnt marshmallow and charred oak. I went back to this nose and I'm getting a toffee now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But if you want to know what the light whiskey provided, it was that toasted note. Uh, and this, it's bitey and fruity and oaky. This comparatively and, is more oily. Mm -hmm, way more oily. Yeah, more of those dark, to your point, scotch fruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, what do they call them? Stone fruit. That's a, you know, anything with a pith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In terms of something that is off the beaten path, unique and beautiful, mm. I think the single malt of magnificence, um, that really hit the mark. Yeah. And in terms of something that is still unique and cool, but also you have those recognizable, those telltale yeah. signs of Balcones, obviously, but those dark classic scotchy malt. fruits. Yeah. yeah. No, this is oh, classic nice. beauty. The oh, uh, I will tell you, because we talked about this on this channel multiple times, this blend fell apart on me twice. Yeah. So no, it that's took what it, two we talk months. About, we talk about that a lot. Yeah. Like whenever you are adding things together, the thing that you're not, the thing that you're trying to prevent is too many disparate things competing, and then they just fall yeah. flat like a house of cards. This is pieces of five barrels. Mm. Uh, I started with eight possible barrels we were going to work with. Yeah. And it built it, and it came apart at the end. And then I built it, and I was about ready to choose proof, and it came apart at the end. Mm -hmm. And I started over and built it and eliminated some of the things I thought me might be causing the problems. Yeah. And it worked. And I created this really amazing whiskey at about 123, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but it's really rich, but it's really like, oh, mm. it's Volcona's struggle. It's like right. high proof struggle. Yeah. And so we went looking for proofs and we created like eight or nine proofs of this. Mm -hmm. And son of a bitch, if a hundred proof wasn't yeah. goddamn perfect. It's, it's funny how often that happens. So I think... Um, the turtle mm -hmm. is always going to be there. Yeah, the turtle is going to be an ongoing character. Yeah, and I think if there is a spirit animal that could conceivably be the official spirit animal of Credit Barrel, yeah, I think turtle's pretty you good. You think the turtle? Yeah, I mean whiskey <laughs> is so slow. It does take for an hour, right? <laughs> but it ends up winning the race. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Once well, more. I think we've done our. I'm going once more. Due more. diligence. Mm. Oh, skip the comments if you want and talk about like this is it. We're hey, now moving on to the things an you can get your hands on. Yeah, things you can get your hands on. Right. Now, and we'll, if you want to donate, you can. And uh, you know what? I think, in terms of the people that are watching the show, that we're looking for an opportunity to contribute something again. Yeah. It's cool that you don't have to bother trying to figure out how to ship yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the whole thing. But yeah. also, um, the, the struggle to figure out have they reviewed that yet? We've oh, gone through yeah. so many whiskeys. Let me face that problem. Right. <laughs> Yeah. To, for people to be like, oh, I wonder if they've, oh, they have. Oh, I and I still get oh, it wrong. Have, yeah. I have a whole spreadsheet, and I've still missed a, yeah. like a half dozen where I'm like, no, I don't think we have. Yeah. And then we'd shoot it, and then someone's like, you already reviewed this. Here's so the link. What if, because <laughs> here's the thing, though. If they want us to review something, that it feels a little impersonal and disconnected, like, here's cash, go drink something. Right. Couldn't they at least say, um, here's cash. I would really like you to review something in this category. Yeah. So the form that you fill out yeah. says, "How would, would you? Do you have a preference on what type of whiskey we review with Perfect. your money?" Yeah. yeah and yeah. then they can fill in category, a, a specific bottle, which we may or may not honor if it's not available, or if we've reviewed it before, or if we've reviewed it before. But yeah. either way, I'll get the category. Yeah, yeah. So that's in there, so that you can choose. Like, I'm a Scotch guy. It suck to have my name on a rye. Yeah. Yeah. That's in the form. Beautiful. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver, Sarge. And if you drink, may you drink, drink with us. us.